Hi everybody and welcome back to my modeling channel. So today I recover one of my uh, former 737-400 from uh, Tireways and despite that uh, the horizontal stab is missing I had uh, a couple of more issues but mainly as uh, I don't know if you can see here but the paint has been ruined there on the nose so I have to uh, rebuild or to do a new a complete new paint on that aircraft so instead of that I decided that I'm going to modify that 737-400 into a 737-500 so for these I'm going to do the the livery of uh, brat ends and the summer flate so I will do this nice uh, colorful livery uh, I'm using two six decals, but first I will have to uh, remove basically a couple of uh, windows and I'll have to trunk our cockpit, our uh, fuselage. So for this, I have to remove about 38 millimeters uh, on the total lens. And basically uh, the main things, the main guideline I'm going to use is four windows. Then I'll do the math, take the measurement and see what's missing from the front and then trim it and I will keep the emergency exit the last one which is required for the 500 so uh, beside that of course I'll have to reclean rebuild and do a little bit of mud but I'm gonna enjoy uh, that a little bit so enough of talking and let's start building so I will start this build by uh, cutting the fuselage initially so uh, for this what I did is I put some mark masking tape and to mark basically where I have to uh, sew the fuselage. So I took the proper dimension uh, for the, the aft part and uh, then what I did is uh, I managed to get, and I, the, the thing is the difficulty was to get pretty, uh, pretty much a straight line and uh, after that we were able to uh, bring them uh, together because uh, the surface is sometimes irregular so uh, that's why it, uh, it can be a little bit challenging. So uh, after that, I did of course the uh, aft part and uh, I will do the front part and then uh, sew both parts together and then I will be able uh, to do it. So basically, I had uh, this 28 millimeters that I had to remove. Uh, I took the part, did the math and then uh, removed the front part and then I was able to get, uh, I think that was 38 centimeters, 38 millimeters. So basically, so there was 18 on the back more or less plus uh, up front and uh, I have to say that it worked uh, pretty well for that after that I use uh, a razor blade saw uh, with a little mount but uh, I have to say that uh, getting through that old plastic and my razor blade saw was getting a little bit old so it became a little bit challenging so once you finish that of course you have to remove the excess of plastic uh, on both part of the fuselage and uh, after that of course, we're going to be able to uh, glue them together straight away. So now what I did is I will use some uh, plastic card and I will roll it inside and I will use that as a guide and also uh, that will reinforce the structure basically of uh, that fuselage. So uh, with this I will be able to get uh, the fuselage at the proper angle as well and uh, that will ease the way back. Um, I did those in the past and I have to say that if you don't use that it's a little bit more challenging. Sometimes the fuselage can be a little bit more banded. Uh, on one side, up, down or left and right. So uh, using this type of plastic card will help you uh, when you do a mod uh, on a kit. So of course, uh, while it uh, dried out, I had to add some putty to cover uh, those, uh, those lines, of course, and those cutting lines because they are pretty big. And I have to say that on the bottom uh, aft fuselage, 
you had a gap as well that uh, you will have to, uh, to, to work a little bit to get a better junction. So of course after the putty dried out I start to uh, do the sanding work and in the meantime removing all the paint as well, uh, the previous paint and the previous livery. But that will come time to time as there will be a lot of uh, filling and sanding and filling and sanding. I have to say that uh, this time I use different type of uh, sandpaper. I use also some uh, abrasive sponge and um, new type of material. This uh, green uh, abrasive uh, sponge was very very useful. I have to say because it's uh, it's a higher, it's more abrasive surface. So it's about a 200, and then you can go down to a 400. And uh, so I was able to do that, and I realized that at the end there was still. Um, I needed to put more putty, a second layer, actually I had to do up to four layers of putty uh, on that build to be able to really have a smooth uh, surface on the fuselage. And even after the fourth one, when I finish the last coat of paint, sometimes depending on how the sun is coming, you can see a little bit of a difference. But generally speaking, I have to say that the work was done correctly and with the decal you can't see much. So uh, after that, I put the third layer and this time I use a Tamiya white putty to be able to see where, uh, where the gap is coming back. And then of course by changing color sometimes you have that effect uh, that you can see. And uh, after that we decide to, I decided to uh, put back the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Keep working on removing the former paint and the former colors of that uh, Thai 737400. And then of course uh, I start to work with a very fine, uh, very fine sandpaper, and basically at the end I use even the 2000 to make sure that uh, the uh, the surface was correct, and uh, I still have to do some little adjustment. But that was the highest part and the, the the biggest part of that build, and that modification was the to get basically the junction on the fuselage. After that, it was time to go to the paint booth. And uh, so what I did is I initially paint the corregar, which are on the top and the bottom of the Boeing. And then I went and I sprayed a little bit um, on those uh, on those edge. And then I could see again that I needed to add a little bit more putty because the surface was not really uh, blended on the, on the fuselage junction. So you can see that I'm, this time I'm using again some white putty. And, um, I will have to let it dry and I put the putty after I finish masking the corrugar of the aircraft uh, to avoid having some more uh, dust and uh, to uh, disturb the, the work I did previously uh, that the paint I just made. While it was dried of course it was time to uh, sand it down so I use as I had a very thin layer I use about uh, six and eight hundred sandpapers and it took a little bit of time but generally speaking I can say that I finally had what the, the, the type of surface I was looking for. So uh, after that I decided I had to paint basically the wings and the engine in a light grey color and, uh, and the engine mount as well. And after that what I will do is I will hand paint uh, the leading edge and the coal anti-ice as uh, I had enough surface and the structure line, the panel lines were there so I didn't need to put any masking tape so it was much easier to do that instead of putting masking tape all over the wings uh, just for these two parts. So that saved me quite a lot of time and uh, once we finish doing these we're gonna put uh, some masking tape all over the fuselage to be able to cover all that grey color and have an overall white color on the fuselage and uh, and the tail as uh, I needed to do even the cockpit in a white color because uh, I need a uniform color to be able to have that uh, nice uh, shiny uh, lemon uh, yellow lemon uh, color on the, on the front part of the fuselage on the nose of the aircraft so uh, I sprayed everything in white I used the same gloss white uh, from Tamiya and uh, it worked very well. I did uh, only one layer this time, but it took a little bit of time, I have to say, to be able to have a nice uh, uniform surface. After that, uh, I was using the decals to really position the, the masking tape correctly. Um, 
and then I was able to cover the whole fuselage and then I will be able to uh, to go back and paint my uh, my nose at that uh, lemon yellow uh, color from Tamiya so uh, I have to say that is exactly what I was looking for I didn't have to do any mix or whatever so uh, covering uh, the aircraft as its uh, small parts I was painting the nose gear door as well and uh, then the just the nose of the aircraft in that uh, nice uh, yellow color so uh, I have to say that it worked very well I uh, didn't need to make a lot of masking details or everything so uh, removing everything and uh, after a curing time of uh, I would say one night I'll, uh, I'll be able to uh, finish up the airplane I have to say that I wait about five days between the white and the yellow because the main issue is if you don't wait if the the white color is not really cured you have some stripe or you can have some mark from the uh, masking tape so that's one of the things I realize when I'm uh, doing some when I'm using uh, the Tamiya paint after doing this well we put the undercarriage on the aircraft and then uh, it was time to uh, start decaling the, the airplane so I had to cut the, those decals in two parts to be able to adjust really well the the front door and the back door and then everything went uh, very smoothly I have to say uh, those two six decals were very very easy to, to handle and to work with I had some issue on the front as uh, the surface was a little bit irregular for the decal and the decal has a, quite a big surface so I had to use some, uh, some, um, some uh, decal solution quite heavy one to remove all the bubble and to stretch the decal a little bit later on but we won't see any marks or anything uh, later on uh, when you will see the, the end result after that I put uh, of course the gear doors and uh, we will finish uh, some details, uh, small details uh, little decals, structure, panels and uh, things like that and uh, after that we will be able to do the, the, final, uh, the final touch for the, for the model basically I will have to put the antenna and then a little bit of weathering so I will put the antenna I will paint the beacon uh, red and uh, after these uh, little parts and those little details it's gonna be time to uh, to do some weathering so for this I will use that standard technique that I'm doing I'm using some pastel mixed with water and a drop of uh, cleaning product or hand soap uh, and then I realized that there was not enough, uh, not enough of that pastel and then mix it again together and then you can uh, go through all the panel lines and uh, when it will uh, and you wait until it dries out and then you can remove it with a, with a, dry, with a wet cloth and a dry cloth behind to be able to remove all the, all the lines and all the, all the, rim, the excess wash and I think I'm using always that technique because it's very forgiving and you don't leave any any marks and if you remove too much you can still add a little bit further on so uh, it's a very easy uh, technique that I would recommend to uh, any beginner and honestly uh, then uh, you'll have a, a nice result toward the end and uh, we're coming close to the end now and this is the uh, end result of that uh, 737 500 from uh, Brathens so I hope you enjoy that uh, modification kit with me. If you did so, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also share those uh, videos and uh, I will see you soon for another build review. Thank you for watching.